in this lesson, we'll talk about sculpt layers and how they can help us to create a really flexible workflow in Mudbox. So we'll open this up. This is lesson 05 start. And if we go into the layers tab, you'll see that I actually have the T-Rex and then I have one layer. We'll ignore that for now. We're going to uh, go ahead and use that here in a second. But let's talk first about what sculpt layers are. So we've got a lot of this detail sculpted in here and it's sculpted into the base mesh. Okay, so what that means is if I want to come in and uh, maybe de-emphasize some of this or make it uh, bring it out a little bit more or change it, uh, I really have to go in and actually re-sculpt the base mesh to create the changes that I want to make. What happens if I want to maybe temporarily put in some different variations of detail that I might want to experiment with? I don't have a lot of flexibility to be able to do that. Or maybe I want to sculpt some detail in and I don't know exactly how uh, how much I want it to stick out and so I, I need to actually build that into the sculpt. Now what we can do with sculpt layers is break those sort of sculpted details apart from the base mesh so that we can then modify those, we can take them off, uh, you know, make them come out a little bit more, uh, etc. So well, let's go ahead and see practically what that looks like. So to create a new sculpt layer, you see you want to be in layers and sculpt you can either hit this button here or you can come up to the little arrow and say new layer. Okay, so we'll create a new layer. We can just click on that and rename this, whatever we like. So this is a new sculpt layer. Now we're on level six. So when we start to do some sculpting, it's going to tell us that this level is created on level six, just like this one. We have the ability to turn the visibility off and on. We have that lock column. We talked about that before. We also have the strength, which doesn't mean much right now because we don't have anything sculpted here. So what we want to do is, to sculpt on our layer, we just need to select it. So if I select the base, any sculpting that I do is going to happen on the base, so I need to select the sculpt layer. And now we need to actually sculpt something. So let's sculpt some bumps onto our dinosaur. So we'll use the sculpt tool. Let's actually use a stamp, and let's just get a taste of the vector displacement maps for one of our stamps. And we'll talk more about vector displacement maps in the next lesson. But just as a quick overview, a vector displacement map will allow us to get more detail than a typical map will enable us to get. We can get things like undercuts and so forth. So let's try to use this second one as a stamp. So coming in here, making sure that we've got our temp layer selected. If I come in now, we can dial our brush size down maybe a little bit. You can see if I rotate around clockwise, that's what that stamp will give me, which is kind of a crater. But if I go counterclockwise, it'll actually give me kind of a raised, kind of a uh, scale type of an effect. Okay, so we can go through here on this layer, and I want to make sure that I'm going the right direction. So everything is raised up. Okay, if you want to get a little bit of a bigger brush, you can do that. Just come in here, you can make some of these more irregular. And just have a little fun with it. Okay, now we've got several options for dealing with uh, things on our on our scope layer. So you can see I can turn the visibility off, turns all of that detail on, off, and just shows us what's on the base. You can turn that back on. You can see that six is the level it's at. So if I actually page down to go to another subdivision level, you can see that that scope layer is not active anymore, and I can't actually sculpt on it. So I have to go back up to level 6 to be able to access it. We can also lock it. So if I try to sculpt now on this, it says it's locked. We can also use the strength to dial it back. So if that's too extreme, we want to dial this back, we can reduce the influence of that layer. So down here, close to 50%, you can see that's about half as much as the, uh, the detail at 100%. If we take that all the way down to 0, it's the same effect as we would have if we turned off the visibility. There are other options for working with our layers. If we right click on them, you can see we can delete layers, we can duplicate layers, okay? We can also uh, freeze our geometry using the layer. We can merge visible layers and flatten layers. So what that will do is if we have multiple uh, sculpt layers here, if we flatten that down, all those sculpt layers will be gone, but the detail contained in those based on the strength settings of that particular layer will be baked into that base. We can also import geometry as sculpt layers. And then we also have mirroring and flipping. So let's try to do that. So if we just try to actually mirror uh, our detail from one side to the other. So looking at this, you can see it's on one side, but not on the other side. 
mirroring is going to actually uh, copy the detail to the other side, so it'll leave this side alone. Flip will actually move it to the other side. So to do this, we need to actually select some faces on the source. So we'll go to our Select and Move Tools, choose Faces, and we'll just select some faces over here. Now let's go over, over here to the other side, and we want to mirror this in the X. So we've now taken that detail that we sculpted on one side and mirrored it over to the other side. So that's useful to be able to do some sculpting in your sculpt layer on one side and then just mirror that detail over to the other side. That's nice to be able to do. You could also flip the detail if you want. Okay. So rather than going through the process of uh, sculpting all of those little dots, let's go ahead and delete this temp layer. And I'm going to turn on the scales layer. And you can see that we have a number of small little scales that we've gone in and added. Now what happens if we have detail in a sculpt layer and we want to actually get rid of it? Let's say that maybe the, uh, the little scales on the neck we want to actually get rid of. Well, one thing that we can do would be to come into our sculpt tools and we could use the erase. So erase will allow you to come in and it just erases that detail out of that particular sculpt layer. So you can see that there. Now we're revealing the base layer. We're not looking at any of the sculpting that's done on that particular layer. Let me, wanna, let me undo that because when we do that, we destroy any of that data. We can't get that back. So if we ever wanted to uh, bring back those scales, we changed our mind and actually we really like those, there's no way we can get those back. So another option for being able to kind of not see specific detail from a particular sculpt layer is to use masking. So let me go ahead and turn this little icon off if it's on. You can see that's on. I want to turn it off just so we can see this. Uh, I'm going to go right next to Erase and go to Mask. And the default here is going to be the painting, but you can also use the lasso or the rectangle marquee to actually do this. But let's take a look at what happens. So we're in the Scales layer. If I come in now with Mask, you can see I'm getting the same effect that I had with Erase. The difference is all of that detail is still in that layer. All that's happening is uh, is that I'm creating a mask so that it's not being seen. If we turn on the little icon, we can actually see that mask. So anywhere that is red are areas where we don't see the influence of this sculpt layer. Now the nice thing is if we don't like that, we want to actually see that, get that detail back, we can hold down control to take away our mask and all of that detail that's still there, we can now see. So this is nice, you could uh, pull in multiple sculpt layers and then mask out different areas of each one to really get some interesting effects. Now keep in mind that you do also have, and this is new in 2012, the ability to use the lasso and the rectangle marquee. Okay, so if we wanted to come in with our lasso and for instance mask out areas up here, you may have to actually uh, update that to be able to see that. You can see that there is our mask that was created not based on our painting but based on our uh, lasso okay and just holding down control we can get rid of that masking there okay again just get it to update here okay so uh, sculpting uh, layers are going to be really useful for you especially if you want to create something where you want to have a little bit of flexibility in adding the detail so you know if you decide that you don't like those you can turn them off or you can come in and make them really light so you can barely see them okay if you have some detail that you want to experiment with you know you've got several kinds of spikes you want to add you can do that on sculpt layers so that they don't destroy your base model you don't have a default model that, to work from and then you add different types of details you can do that within your sculpt layers and it gives you a lot of flexibility to go in and change things later on um, if you need to and remember masking is a better solution for taking away some of that detail because you're not destroying it, you're just masking that out. You can always get it back if you need it. On a side note, we can also use sculpt layers. Um, if we're exporting those, we can export them as blend shapes. If you have a character you're working on and you want to put some, uh, some detail, do some expressions or something with your uh, sculpt layers, you can actually export those as blend shapes as well. All right, so now that we've taken a look at sculpt layers, uh, let's go ahead next and talk about vector displacement maps. And those are going to give us 
uh, the ability to really reproduce some, some nice detail very quickly just using a map. So we'll take a look at those in the next lesson.